just over one hour ago. This was Greg Foster's semifinal effort in his bid to qualify for the United States Olympic track and field team with a broken arm. He comes out of lane seven. Every hurdle, a critical test for Greg Foster. Foster looking good. He must finish fourth or better. Foster challenging for the lead now. And he doubles up. And it's over. Oh. One of his arch enemies, Tony Campbell, goes on to win the heat. Greg Foster, who has been ranked either number one or two in the world for the last 10 years, 19 days ago, broke the arm was in obvious pain his first two races. I've never seen anyone start a competition in so much pain. And here in his third race, he just couldn't make it. Epitomizing Olympic spirit and only part of the story in Indianapolis. Frank, it sounds so simple. Just jump the hurdles that are 42 inches high. But already these hurdles have claimed many a dream and we'll have a chance to spell them out for you as we look forward to the men's 110 meter High hurdles final, which is just a few minutes away. This is Roger Kingdom, the gold medalist in the 1984 Olympic Games. He has already won with that gold medal and also set a 13-14 meet record, the best time in the history of the Olympic trials that was in the semifinals. He was ranked number one in the world for 84 and again in 85, but has been anything but spectacular since then, although he is regaining his form right now. And there are many other stories in this field. Among the ones that are missing is Greg Foster. At the beginning of our show, you saw Greg Foster with the broken arm fall in his semifinal heat. And he right now joins Frank Gifford. Thank you, Alan. Greg Foster, I think you know what Jim Spivey feels. Uh, you handle it so gracefully in the press conference afterwards. What's going on the inside, however? Well, right now, I still feel relieved that it's over. I'm glad I gave it a try and gave it an honest try. And I thought I gave 100% effort, so I'm happy with that. Pain in that arm right now, Greg? Right now, no, there's no pain. I think the, the fact that um, over, it's over and uh, I think the arm feels a little better knowing that it's over also. As painful as it might be, Greg, why don't we take a look at it? Maybe you can see what happened. Uh, I think it was about the sixth to seventh hurdle. Yeah. And here it is. Right next to you is Anthony Dees to your left. Looks as though you begin to veer just a little bit to yeah. the left. Pretty much veered. And basically, when I veered to the, to the left, Tony and I bumped arms and it just threw me off a little bit more and basically I just wasn't able to regain and I told the doctors before I left Los Angeles I was not going to risk going down and re-injuring it so I basically thought it was best for me to pull off. Well, Greg you've been the world champion 83 and 87 silver medalist as a favorite in 84 uh, down the line could there could you even dream of another opportunity? I think right now 1992 is still in reality I don't feel any reason to stop right now I feel good I'm still feeling strong and I don't feel tired or even uh, I guess sick of the event right now. I still feel like I'm, I'm, I can be one of the top hurdlers out there, so I'm going to give it another shot. Okay, you're going to give it a little bit of a rest, I'm sure. Will you maybe perhaps we could see you maybe towards the end of the summer? Well, right now, my plans are basically to go home and just relax. I'm not going to risk it running in just a regular meet. And, you know, it was here because of the fact this is an important meet and it gave me a chance to make the Olympic team. That's why we risked it here. And we're not going to risk it just running any meet over in Europe. So we feel it's best to rest right now. Greg Foster, real champion. No complaints at all about the selection system? None whatsoever. You know, until they come up with a, a much fairer system, this is the best we have. Okay, Greg, thank you for being with us. Good luck. We hope it mends absolutely perfectly. Thank you. All right, Dan, uh, once again, we're getting set for the men's 110-meter hurdles, the world and American record set by Ronaldo Nehemiah in a time of 1293. That record is now seven years old. He set it in Zurich, Switzerland. Meanwhile, the best time set so far this year belongs to Roger Kingdom. That was set here in the semifinals, a time of 13-14, as Kingdom now seems to have completely come back from a torn hamstring he suffered a couple of years ago. Ronaldo Nehemiah, long and important factor in the plans of the San Francisco 49ers. He was released by them in 86, got his amateur status reinstated by the IAAF, and is now a major factor again in track and so is this man, Al Joyner, the gold medalist in the triple jump in 84, failed to make the team this year, and now, with his prediction intact, has reached the finals with a good chance of making this team, but we're not quite sure. He is, of course, the husband of Florence Griffith Joyner, who won the 200 meters already today. Cletus Clark in lane one, Keith Talley in two, Andre Phillips, who could easily win this in lane three, then Kingdom, Arthur Blake in five, Tony Campbell, who's another major factor here in six, Nehemiah and Joyner in seven and eight. The race should be in lanes four, five, and six, but Roger Kingdom, who was sitting by our booth just before he went down to warm up, said, I'm not forgetting about Nehemiah. He's out there in lane seven, but he's been improving with every race. 
Kingdom is in lane four. And there he is, number 844. Crowd reacting to a field result. And now they'll be told to please quiet down so that the burglars can hear the start. Represent the United States again. Well, Roger called it. He told me before he went down to warm up, it was lanes four, five, and six, and that's where the team came from. I think when we look back at it, Roger hit a hurdle about the fourth or fifth one out that slowed him up, but he got it going again, and he was closing fast at the finish. There it is once again, Roger in black in lane five. As you mentioned, he's not always the quickest of starters. Tony Campbell in the bright yellow shorts at about the fourth hurdle appeared to have the lead. Arthur Blake, the man from FSU, splitting the two of them. And here's where Roger runs into some trouble. He got sideways and he's so strong, he recovered. And now he's back in the race. At this point, Nehemiah has hit a hurdle and has taken himself out of the race. This is what makes Kingdom different from just about anyone else running the race. He's so strong that even if he hits hurdles, gets off balance, he can get it going again and off the final hurdle, even though Tony Campbell was right with him, I think Roger beats him in that long run to the tape and Arthur Blake in blue will get third. It is Kingdom, Campbell and Blake. Ronaldo Nehemiah, who missed the 1980 Olympics because of the boycott, played football in 84, will not get a chance in 88. Al Joyner will have to go and be a spectator and watch his wife, Florence Griffith Joyner, as he does not qualify. But there is Roger Kingdom, 25 years old, a graduate of Pittsburgh, who's with Catherine Switzer. Catherine? And I'm with the winner, Roger Kingdom. Roger, fantastic. You're going back to the Olympics again. How does it feel? It feels really great. I mean, uh, all the anticipation, all the waiting, we just really felt bad. And through the first couple of rounds, we had to struggle. And um, I managed to do well in my semi, but there's entirely too much pressure on in the finals, and I didn't run a great race. But you've had problems with a hamstring, and you just come back into form. Right, and uh, it's still not 100% now. I felt some spasm before the race because of the heat, not drinking enough fluids. But um, I was fortunate. I was blessed. That's why I'm so excited now, because I made it through. It didn't get hurt, and I'm on the team again. Well, we're looking forward to that. Back to you, Al. All Thank right, Catherine, you. the Thank march you. of the 84 gold medalists oh, continues. Yes. Carl yes, Lewis yes. heading back to Seoul. Edwin Moses heading back to Seoul. Valerie Briscoe heading back to Seoul. And so is Roger Kingdom. Well, all he had to do after the way he's been running for the last two months was finish the race, and we thought he would be in the top three. He clobbered that hurdle, but he kept his cool. Arthur Blake, who's been improving vastly in the last month over in Europe in blue, runs a good race. And Tony Campbell, who's always been one of the top men in the world, finally put it together when he had to to make a team. He was disappointed last year before the World Championships, but he made it this time. And Roger told me earlier he credits his girlfriend with getting him back from that hamstring injury. As a matter of fact, he said that his hamstring injury was like a sensitive girlfriend. This is his explanation. You've got to caress it and be sensitive to it, and when you need it, it will be there. Both the hamstring and the girlfriend were there when he needed it. Roger Kingdom, Tony Campbell, and Arthur Blake representing the United States in the high hurdles.